Get your ears wrapped around the Golden State Media Concepts Basketball Podcast. All the scoop you need to know from college basketball to the NBA and even March Madness. News of your rising stars. Topics on and off the hardwood. This is the Golden State Media Concepts Basketball Podcast. All right, and welcome to the GSMC Basketball Podcast. This episode is brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network, and as always, I am your host, Jesse Tapia. All right, it is Wednesday. We finally got game three today, okay? It's been ridiculous how we've had to wait so long between games, but nonetheless, here we are. All right, game two was on Sunday. They literally made us wait Monday and Tuesday for game three. But nonetheless, we did it. All right. So let me tell you what's going on today. Obviously, we don't have a game to recap as we usually do. So we're going to be talking about tonight's game three. Getting my thoughts on what Cleveland needs to do there. Okay. Second segment. We got DeMarcus Cousins. No news. Just some thoughts. Going to be talking about him as far as being a free agent and all. Talk about what market's out there. Talk about the teams that he could end up with. Okay. Third segment, speaking of free agency, it's never too early to talk about LeBron. All right, you got Stephen A. Smith coming out today on first take, talking about how LeBron probably will be taking meetings with the Celtics and Golden State Warriors. I'm going to give my thoughts on that. Could LeBron finally end up in Boston? Could he just join the enemy in Golden State? Possibly. All right, so we'll talk about that, talk about the fits and all, see if it works. I mean, honestly, I it's... It's weird seeing that LeBron would be taking meetings with teams like the Celtics or the Warriors. Just you never, I don't know. Before you just never really saw the best players in the world taking meetings with the best teams. But nonetheless, it could happen. Okay, that's the NBA we're currently living in right now. So can't get mad at it. And then for the fourth segment, we'll talk about anything else going on in the world of basketball. All right, whether that be any more Brian Colangelo news, whether it be anything else. So that's what's going on. So, let's get into it. Game 3 going on tonight. All right. Right now, Warriors are up 2-0. No one I don't think anyone's really surprised. All right. I mean, the series has gone exactly how I thought I figured we all thought it would. Okay, I understand that Cleveland had a great chance in game 1 to pull off a win. That didn't happen and I mean, if Cleveland was to take a game in Oakland against the Warriors, it'd be that game. Obviously, we're past that now. We're not going to talk about the fact that J.R. Smith just seemingly didn't know the end of the situation and all that. But nonetheless, it is what it is. Okay. But like I said, I mean, in reality, whether it was close or not, we all figured the Warriors would be up 2-0 after two games. So nothing's really changed here. Nothing is too difficult to figure out. There's nothing real complex about this series. Okay. We are where we thought we would be. All right. And now it's just a point... Can Cleveland take games three and games four? Okay. Because I will say this. If Cleveland has any shot to make this series go at least six games, then they have to win both these home games here. Okay. It doesn't matter that they win game three, lose game four, lose game three, win game four. They need to win both. All right. There's no if, and, or but about it. All right. I don't see a way where Cleveland ends up taking game five. That's just completely out of the realm of possibilities for me. And honestly, I'm not even sure how they take games three or games four. Okay. Cleveland, so far this postseason, their theme has been... Their theme has been inconsistency. Not among LeBron James, but among everyone else. Okay, and I feel that we've seen this consistency move over into the finals. Okay, 
LeBron has done his thing. Dropped 51, 8, and 8 in game one. Had a near triple double in game two. Okay, you've had Kevin Love, who's averaged about 20 and 10 in the first two games. And idealistically, that's what you want if you're Cleveland. Okay, but the problem is that you want your other players to show up also. And that has been a problem for them. It is ridiculous how they're only really guaranteed production from one player. I guess this series, it's been from two. But after that, you really don't have anyone else who's playing well. Okay. Jeff Green had one good game, a game seven against Boston. First two games of the finals does not show up. Okay. George Hill puts up, what, 12 points in game one? That's not great, but it was a contribution. Game two, he dropped seven. Larry Nance plays well, game one. Game two, nowhere to be found. Tristan Thompson has been pretty bad these first two games. And then you got Jordan Clarkson, who seemingly has forgotten how to make a shot. And then Rodney Hood has just completely lost all confidence in himself. So obviously, it hasn't been a great postseason run for this team. It's been a great postseason run for LeBron James, but for the team as a whole, been about as bad as you could be. Okay? Obviously, that is not a recipe for success when they only have two players stepping up. And I don't think I've ever really seen a team like this where where it, like they've been so bad over the current run of a postseason. Okay? But that's what they need. They need one of those guys to step up. And honestly, I think that that like cuz I think Kevin Love and LeBron are going to play well today. Okay? And obviously the Cavs need a third person to step up in order for them to have a shot. And as odd as it may sound, I think that person is Rodney Hood. Okay. He's been a story for the Cavs over the postseason. Refused to come in during garbage time in one game. And since then, hasn't really played much. And if he has, it's only been garbage time. Alright. We all know for a fact that Rodney Hood has been dealing with some confidence issues. He's come out and said said it. He's talked about how he's had to watch jazz highlights, old jazz highlights, to remind himself that he's good, which is just honestly entirely weird to me. I mean, how are you in the NBA and you don't realize that you're good? All right. But nonetheless, it seems that Ty Lue, he's came out and he said that Rodney Hood's going to get a lot more playing time, well, more playing time in game three. And it's not just going to be garbage time minutes. If I'm Ty Lue, why not just throw him into the starting lineup? Okay, what good is having J.R. Smith there? J.R. Smith has been terrible so far in these first two games. Then if you look at other replacements, Jordan Clarkson, yeah, he's been just as bad as J.R. Smith, if not worse. Kyle Korver, he has not done one thing so far in this series. All right. Why not give Rodney Hood a shot there? I mean, literally, what can you lose here? No one's expecting the Cavs to come out and come back in this series. Everyone pretty much thinks it's over, which I'd say it is. Okay. And I mean, Cleveland could come out and win tonight. It's not going to matter, I'm telling you. These games won't matter unless it's Cleveland winning both of them. Okay. And I just don't see how that happens. Well, I can't see how it happens. I just don't have enough faith in the team itself to make it happen. All right. And you got to think, too, that with all these guys playing as poorly as they have been, is it just because they're too intimidated to play with LeBron? I mean, looking at the guys who who got traded there. Jordan Clarkson, Larry Nance, Rodney Hood, George Hill. Okay. George Hill last season was playing with the Jazz, was a very important part of that team's offense, and had a very good season. He goes to Sacramento, he plays well, all right, and ends up getting traded to Cleveland. Since he comes to Cleveland, he's really just been a shell of himself, all right? Seemingly a bit timid, not really taking charge or anything like that as far as trying to get the ball and all and trying to score, all right? Jordan Clarkson was a decent scorer on the Lakers. Okay, never really struggled too much or anything like that. Had a role, did it well. Okay, he comes to Cleveland. He's just pretty much useless on the offensive side of the ball. 
All right, Larry Nance, his game never really changed. It's just He's just not as productive with the Cavs. All right. And then you got Rodney Hood, who did well coming off the bench for the Jazz, was playing extremely well. Now, all of a sudden, that's a problem. Okay, and it's not like as soon as Rodney Hood came to the key, or Cavs, he went, uh, went straight to the bench. There's a reason why he's on the bench. He just never really played well when he was out there. Okay, and I think one of the Cavs' biggest problems was trying to make Rodney Hood a starter when we've all known that he hasn't been. Okay, Rodney Hood is kind of like a Jamal Crawford type player where um, in the starting five, they're not going to be as effective as you'd want them to be. Off the bench, they're going to be one of your best players. Okay. That's why we've seen Jamal Crawford last so long in this league. He knows his role, and he's done well to take part in it. Rodney Hood needs to realize that, you know what? I might just be a career bench guy, but coming off, if I'm good off the bench and I'm like a six-man-of-the-year type player every year, then that's a solid NBA career. Okay? But like I said, all these guys that came to this team have seemingly got worse. And I think it might just be one where it is some intimidation as far as going to play with LeBron James. Because, I mean, over in Utah, no one was really expecting the Jazz to do too much. Maybe make the playoffs, but that's just about it. Okay? Over in Sacramento, I mean, that place is a wasteland. And then with the Lakers, you're just pretty much trying to develop for the future. There's no real goal there besides developing. Okay, you go from those situations over to Cleveland where... You're playing with the best player in the world. And not only that, your main goal is to go out and win a title. And anything other than that is a failure. That's a lot of pressure on some guys who were in nowhere near those situations with the teams they were with. Okay. And of course, I'm sure that maybe LeBron's thinking, you know, probably shouldn't have traded all those guys away at the deadline. But nonetheless, here they are. And like I said, I mean, in order for the Cavs to win it tonight, you're going to need LeBron to draw probably at least 40 plus and have a near triple double. Kevin Love's got to give him his usual 20 and 10. And then you need some other player, a third player to step up and at least produce, give you at least 15. Okay. Of course, you're going to need some breaks along the way, but it's going to be tough. I will say that. I mean, that goes without saying also, I guess. Okay. So it'll be very interesting, interesting to see what Cleveland ends up doing here. All right, like I said, there's no win one, lose one, and then try and win game five. You got to win both here. Okay. And if they win both, I mean, who's to say they can't win game six in Cleveland and force a game seven? So we'll see what ends up happening. But nonetheless, I'm going to wrap it up here. Next up, we're going to be talking about DeMarcus Cousins. So stay tuned, and I will be right back. Are you looking for the very best NFL and college football podcast? Then check out the GSMC Football Podcast. Get the latest football news both on and off the field. From the NFL draft to trades to the rumor mill to the NFL combines. They got you covered. That's gsmcpodcast.com backslash football dash podcast. Get updates on college rivalries, game day insights, and much, much more. It's football talk the way you want it. This show eats, sleeps, and breathes football. Don't forget to like them on Facebook and follow them on Twitter. Visit gsmcpodcast.com for more info. Welcome back to the GSMC Basketball Podcast. Like I said, we have no game to recap today. So, we spent the first segment previewing Game 3, obviously. But, nonetheless, yeah. Cleveland, in order for them to take Game 3 tonight, they're going to need some production out of someone not named Kevin Love or LeBron James. Okay? And as easy as that sounds, I mean, it should be. It's been tough. Okay, there's no been no real consistency with this squad as far as the guys other than Kevin Love and LeBron James so far. And honestly, I don't know how they're going to get production from someone else. I mean, there's this whole thing where, I mean, role players play well at home. But I don't even know if I trust these guys enough to do that. Okay. 
So we'll see what ends up happening. But like I said, if Cleveland has any chance at whatsoever at taking this game, they're going to need someone other than LeBron or Kevin Love to step up. And seemingly enough, throughout this postseason, that hasn't been the case at all. Okay, this team has been so bad, it's ridiculous. All right, but nonetheless, enough about the finals there for a sec. Let's talk about free agency. Okay, we got a lot of good free agents this upcoming offseason. Paul George, LeBron James, who, who we'll be talking about in the third segment. All right, who else? DeAndre Jordan could be one. Maybe Melo, if he's crazy enough to opt out of the deal he's got right now. But nonetheless, yeah, a lot of good free agents. Also, 27-year-old DeMarcus Cousins is going to be a free agent. All right? And DeMarcus Cousins is before he got hurt, was a top five center, if not the best center in the league. Okay. I've always said it that if DeMarcus Cousins played on a better team besides the Kings and like a team who made the playoffs and stuff, he'd probably already have an MVP. Okay. He's had some years where he probably should have won MVP, but was never even in consideration just given that the Kings were so bad. Okay, and people always point at DeMarcus Cousins and say that it's his fault why his teams are so bad. He doesn't make anyone good around, anyone around him better. But, I mean, that's tough when the team you're playing for doesn't put any real talent around you. Okay, it's tough when the team you're playing on passes on guys like Kawhi Leonard in order to take guys like Jimmer Fredette. All right, it really is. I mean, it was failed draft pick after failed draft pick after failed draft pick when DeMarcus Cousins was at his, was his, was at his peak with the Kings. I'm surprised they even hit, did so well in the DeMarcus Cousins pick. Okay. But without a doubt, the Kings never really put enough around him for him to succeed at all. They had no talent. Okay. Everyone that did play well with DeMarcus Cousins too, just got they got rid of. Like Isaiah Thomas. Isaiah Thomas and DeMarcus Cousins love playing with each other. What did the Kings do? Oh yeah, we don't want to pay Isaiah Thomas four year, give Isaiah Thomas a four year, thirty million dollar contract total. Let's get rid of him, which is just ridiculous to me. But nonetheless, yeah, I can't blame Demarcus Cousins for that. All right, so he's never really been on a winning team. I mean, over his career, I think he's averaged about twenty one and a half points. Let me see. Over his career, he's averaged twenty one and a half points, eleven rebounds, three assists. This year, before he blew out his Achilles, he was averaging 25, 13, and 5.5, and which is pretty good, I'd say so. All right, we're shooting 47% from the field, 35% from three, which was a career high. All right. Actually, actually, it was above his career average, I should say. I wouldn't say it was a career high. His career high as far as three-point percentage came in 2016, 2017, that season, where he shot 37% from the field. All right. But nonetheless, I mean, yeah, this year he was averaging 25. Year before that, he was averaging 24. And then the two years before that, his last two years in Sacramento, he was averaging 27. All right, nearly 28. So, DeMarcus Cousins has always been a great player. I mean, you usually think he's a max player, but nonetheless, I mean, is he going to be getting a max contract this year? I, I'd say so. Okay, some team is going to offer him the max, but it's not going to be a very good team. All right. I saw that teams like, obviously, the Pelicans are interested in DeMarcus Cousins. Okay, teams like the Lakers the um, and the Mavs. All right, that's not like his full free agent, like the full free agent suitors or anything like that. But nonetheless, there is some, some interest in DeMarcus Cousins. Okay. And the guy's 27. He's 27 years old, probably right in the middle of his prime. But the only problem with him is, is that he's seven foot and he's coming off of an Achilles injury. Okay. And I feel like if I'm DeMarcus Cousins, I do want to play with a contender, but I also do want to make one more big money contract. So it's going to be a bit tough for him to make a decision. Okay. Because he is basically just betting on himself this season. If he takes a deal, a short term deal with a contender. Okay, because I mean, there's the possibility that he does take a short term, short short term deal with a contender, and 
he does play well, which earns him a long-term deal. But like I said, there's not really been too many players to come back from Achilles injuries and play at the same level they were at. I mean, we saw Kobe blew out his Achilles. And ever since then, he just really was a shell of himself and eventually just had to retire. Okay. I'm not sure how we could expect Marcus Cousins, as great as he's been over his career, to come back from an Achilles injury like that at 27, being 7 feet tall, and to be the same dominant player. Especially given that now you need these bigs to be a whole lot more athletic than what they used to be. Meaning, they got to go out to the three-point line and guard there. They got to be good with their footwork and all. Okay. DeMarcus Cousins, for as big as he is, moves very athletically. All right. So it's going to be tough for him to be as agile coming off of that injury. All right. But like I said, I mean, I do see a team like Dallas offering him a max deal, and it's just a matter of whether or not he wants to bet on himself or whether or not he wants to make this last amount of money. All right. And obviously, we had Isaiah Thomas asked on Twitter, asked asked about whether or not he'd like to play with DeMarcus Cousins again. He said, of course he would and all that. But, I mean, Isaiah Thomas, I don't really think he's too worried about playing with DeMarcus Cousins this offseason. Okay. Isaiah Thomas, like I said, also a guy from the Kings who seemingly probably should still be there, but the Kings were just not smart enough to lock him up long term for at a cheap rate also. All right, but nonetheless, he goes from the Kings to the Suns. Doesn't work out there. I mean, before he got to Boston, it was a 20 point per game score. All right, but just essentially, essentially was just never given a real chance. Then you got him going to Boston where. He pretty much took that city by storm, had one of the greatest all-time offensive scoring seasons in Celtics history, which is pretty impressive considering the fact they've had guys like John Havlicek, Larry Bird, Paul Pierce, all that play for them. All right, so you're getting like so. Let's see, over his career, he's averaged about 18.9 points per game, so about 19 points, so near 20. All right, and like I said, that season with Boston, he had. He averaged twenty about 29 points. Let's see. Six assists, two rebounds, shot. 38% from three, 46% from the field. So that was probably the best season he's ever. And it's just a point now where his value after that season with the Celtics was about as high as it, it would ever be. And it's just a point now where his value after that season with the Celtics was about as high as it, it would ever be. And now it's just a point where you're not even sure if he's going to be making a salary, average salary, like in the double digits as far as the millions go. Okay. His hip injury was definitely the worst thing that could have happened to him. I mean, this past season was the worst thing that could have happened to him, especially in a contract year. I mean, getting traded to Cleveland for Kyrie Irving and all, that's fine. All right, you're dealing with a hip injury. You come back in January. You're not looking good. Okay, you're not really fitting in with the team. They say, you know what, forget it. We'll just trade you over to the Lakers, and then you're coming off the bench for them. And it's not even like they necessarily want you back. That's tough. Okay. And I'm very curious to see who views Isaiah Thomas as a starting point guard out there. I mean, I could see him end up with a team like the Pacers. I could see him end up with a team like the Magic who need a point guard. I mean, there's going to be plenty of suitors out there. It's just what role they have for him. And if you're Isaiah Thomas, I mean, is playing for a contender even a thought of yours? Okay, I figure that if you're Isaiah Thomas, you're going to the team that offers you the most money, as you probably should. Okay, because like I said, this is going to be Isaiah Thomas's last opportunity to get a decent size contract. And even then, so I think decent size is a bit of an over-exaggeration for what he's probably going to get. Okay. But like I said, I mean, there are going to be some suitors out there. Like I said, there will be guys offering DeMarcus Cousins a max deal. There probably will be guys out there offering Isaiah Thomas a decent amount of money. Okay, it's just a matter of who's willing to do that. All right. So we'll see what ends up happening with these two players. DeMarcus Cousins, I'm sure, will be fine as far as the amount of money he'll be making this year. As far as being a player, getting back to what he used to be, that's going to be tough. All right. I don't really see that happening, but like I said, crazy things have happened before, so we'll see what ends up going down. But nonetheless, we're going to wrap it up here. Next up, we're going to be talking about LeBron James and him in free agency, so stay tuned, and I will be right back. 
Check out the show that's built on the MMA. From the UFC to extreme cage fighting, they got the fights covered. Check out the GSMC MMA podcast. Get the latest news on past or upcoming fights. Join us as we talk to and about some of the biggest names in the MMA, past, present, and future. When it's the fight game, there's just one show to check out. GSMCpodcast.com backslash MMA dash podcast. Don't forget to like them on Facebook and follow them on Twitter. Visit gsmcpodcast.com for more info. Welcome back to the GSMC Basketball Podcast. We spent the first segment talking about Cleveland's Game 3 versus Golden State tonight. All right, finally got ourselves a game after two long days of waiting. NBA better not do that again, or actually I think they are. All right, if Cleveland ends up taking one of these games, that means we have to wait till Friday night, till Monday, to watch another game, which is just ridiculous. All right, but of course, I'm really joking around. We also talked about DeMarcus Cousins in the second segment. Talked about his little free agency status and all that. So we did that there. And now we're going to talk about another player's free agency status. And that's LeBron James. All right. Yes, he is still playing in the finals. So it's a little premature. But nonetheless, it doesn't matter. All right. We got Stephen A. Smith out here today. He's came out and said that the Warriors will be a suitor for LeBron James. Okay. Says that they have an idea of him playing along with KD and Steph Curry. That sounds disgusting. Okay, that is way too good there. That is not good for anyone besides the Warriors and their fans. Alright, and he's also said that the Celtics could be a suitor for LeBron James. And I've been seeing the Celtics name pop up like the last week or so. I never really knew from where. But nonetheless, now that you got Stephen A. Smith... I guess confirming it, I guess that makes it true, but it's a little weird. All right. You never really thought that the Celtics, given the way they've tried to build their team, would be suitors for LeBron James, but here we are. And of course, I mean, even if you are the Celtics or Warriors, I'm sure they think, you know what, we're fine with what we got here. But it's always good to take a meeting, isn't it? I mean, what if the best player in the world does want to come play for you? Okay. Why wouldn't you take that chance? But of course, I mean, this is what LeBron's, LeBron's going to be deciding between Philly, Cleveland, Houston, LA, Golden State, and the Celtics. And then I guess you got Miami, who he could take a meeting with also. That's seven teams right there. Okay. Two of them were the one and two seeds in the West. Uh, two others were top three in the East. Another is his home, is his team he's played for for a while. Then you got the Lakers who have always been linked to him. All right. And then the Heat where he used to play. So it's all pretty familiar there. All right. But as far let's let's talk about LeBron and the Warriors. Okay. Why would that make sense? Why it wouldn't and what not? So I think that the only way you get to they put LeBron on that team is if you get rid of Clay and Draymond. Okay. Because obviously their plan would be to keep... It would be to keep um, KD and Steph there so LeBron could play with them. Okay. Let's see. Let me see what... Draymond is currently making because I think Draymond's currently on a deal right now. Yeah, so Draymond is on a five-year deal right now that ex- that expires in 2020. He's currently making about 16 million a year, 82 of it's guaranteed. You got Steph locked up up until 2022. Clay's deal expires after next season, 
And KD's deal expires this year, but he's already said he's going to sign a deal, a team, um, a team deal. All right. So I mean, getting rid of Clay and Draymond allows you to bring in LeBron because obviously, if you're bringing in LeBron, you're going to have to bring him on a max deal. Maybe a sign and trade could possibly work there. But just imagine the dominance of a LeBron James, Kevin Durant, Steph Curry led team. You'd literally have three top five players on one team and you'd have the best player and the second best player in the league on the same team. That does not sound fun at all. Okay. Like at all. That's just continued dominance right there. Okay. You'd have LeBron and that Warriors team going to the finals year after year. And I mean, who beats them? Okay, honestly, who beats that Warriors team? Is it Houston? Definitely not. Okay, Boston's probably got the team close enough to beating them. I don't even think that happens. Okay, then you got Philly. Philly doesn't stand a chance against LeBron, KD, and Steph. And me personally, I don't think that LeBron is going to end up in Golden State. But of course, it is a fun thing to talk about and think about. But nonetheless, would that ruin the NBA? If you've just got the same team winning year after year, 